Uh, today I'm really excited to talk to you guys about something that is the whole reason why I wanted to actually ever make a YouTube video, ever, 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 like the only reason I've ever wanted to make a YouTube video. About two years ago, I posted some photos of myself on a trip, um, traveling by myself to Paris, and I made a simple caption in one of my photos asking if anybody wanted further information about how I went about tr planning that trip. And a lot of people responded um, asking me for advice, any recommendations, loving the idea of a possible video. And I promise I have been trying to make this happen for the last two years, it's been on my mind. Part of it has been motivation, part of it has been time, part of it has been scared that it would not be what I envisioned I wanted it to be and just being too much of a perfectionist to actually make it happen. So here we are. So how I wanted to lay out this video was to lay out the who, what, when, where, why, how, and I'll touch on where I went. Um, I'll touch on what applications I used to help with planning the travel. I'll touch on how I paid for it. I'll touch on where I stayed. Then lastly, and I think my favorite part is what I took with me. I spent a lot of time looking into what you would need on this sort of trip um, and compiling the ones that I felt like would be the most necessary and what would work for me. Also finding out why people needed certain items. So I'll try to go into all of that too to save you a lot of time. All right, so let's get to the chase. Who went on this trip? Just me. Why did I go on this trip? Well, to be honest, I really wanted to go to Europe forever. I mean, I think that's like the typical thing that we're <laughs> um, exposed to when we're younger is like, I want to go to Europe. I want to go see Europe. So I always obviously wanted to go. Um, but right before I started medical school was one of my longer breaks and probably the longest break I ever had ever. <laughs> so um I really wanted to go then and I guess my mom and dad weren't too happy because they didn't want their little girl going to Europe. As an excuse, my mom just was like, you know, you'll like you'll get married someday and he'll take you um, to Europe. And I didn't really like that answer, obviously, but um, I took it and I actually did something else that summer, which I'll get into a little bit later. But um, then what happened was four years later, I am about to be a graduating uh, doctor and there's still no man, nobody to take me to Europe, didn't have anybody to actually go with me because all my friends were married with kids. So I actually took myself and I didn't get any pushback from my parents, which was pretty cool. So how long did I go for? I went for three weeks. I went to three different countries. I spent about a week per country and I will go into the exact itinerary a little bit later. The time period that I went was about towards the end of April, like the second to last week of April uh, into the first or second week of May. If I went from like middle of the week to middle of the week, so it was three weeks. Where I went exactly, I went traveled first from JFK. Um, I flew into Madrid. Then I took a train throughout the rest of my trip except for one connecting flight. So I went from Madrid to Seville, Seville to Barcelona. This is all in Spain. And then from Barcelona, I flew to Paris. From Paris, I took a train to Lyon, Lyon to Nice. Nice was my last city in Paris, France. And then from there continued along onto the coast of Italy where I went to Cinque Terre, uh, Florence, Rome, and lastly Venice. And from Venice, I flew back to JFK. So I think a really important point is how did I prepare mentally? I think it's very difficult to fathom the idea of just waking up one day and telling myself, I'm gonna go to Europe and I'm gonna go by myself and I'm gonna do it for three weeks. I think that that's a little bit too much for a first time traveler by themselves. Um, so my one suggestion and the way that I kind of looking back realized how I did it and why I was able to go about this trip by myself and 
I wouldn't necessarily call it successful, but it wasn't unsuccessful. So, I mean, I would recommend what I did. So that's why I'm going to put this out there. But um, starting from whenever I kind of had my own independence, which was whenever I had a car, I would kind of try to do some day trips whenever I had a chance. If it was going from where we live in upstate New York down to New York City or Boston, going to like cities about an hour, two hours away, like the Woodbury outlets, um, just like a few hours there and back, like to the point where my parents wouldn't even notice I was gone. <laughs> so uh, sorry, mom and dad. But yeah, I mean, I would take advantage of those types of opportunities to explore and get to know how to just physically get myself around from one place to another. As I started to be able to get that technology in place, independence in place, I started doing little trips. Then that summer that I mentioned where my mom didn't want me to go to Europe before medical school, I actually um, was lucky enough to go on a cross-country road trip. Even that was a little difficult for my parents, I won't lie, um, but I had a really, really good friend that I got to travel with and together, mostly her. We planned out a really, really well thought out trip. Um, every city that we went to, every place that we stayed was all documented really well. I can always get into that at another time. So if you want to know more about that, let me know. But that was a 10 day road trip. So that also helped, you know, introduce this idea of traveling to not only myself, but also my family too. And then throughout the four years of medical school, I started to also continue doing these like small day and weekend trips. Like I go to from LA to San Francisco, from Southern California to San Diego. I would go on like hiking trips. I went to the Sequoias. You know, certain things that kind of also continued to help me get more comfortable with traveling. When I would go to certain cities, uh, in, namely New York City and San Francisco, I really tried to push myself to learn how to use the public transportation system. Most of the big cities in countries abroad also have uh, pretty robust uh, metro systems and I really think that being able to navigate myself throughout Manhattan was really helpful to get me through the metro systems. Uh, in other countries, especially because a lot of them weren't in English. So if you have a kind of understanding of how metro systems work, then it helps you in other countries as well. And it's easier to learn it in your own native language and then try to apply the same um, experiences to other countries too. So I just tried to build up all these experiences over the years and also slowly nudge my parents into that direction that um, I'm a strong independent woman. But let's talk about finances. This is a big part of the trip. There's no sugarcoating that. Traveling can be expensive. There are ways to cut back and do it on a budget, but you still need money to even go travel at all, um, even just to get the first leg of your trip. So I think it's really important to hammer this in, but I actually paid for a good amount of the trip from cash back rewards from a credit card. Back when I was in college, I opened a credit card with a friend and we told ourselves that we would travel with the cash back rewards that we both earned. That didn't end up working out. So I decided as a declaration of independence, I was going to actually on purpose use this funds on my solo trip to Europe. That was a big chunk of change. I also saved up all of my birthday money, all of my ED, all of my graduation money so that I could also help pay for this trip. And also during medical school, I also did work study and I was just doing my best to save up whatever I had to help pay for this trip. Another thing that I did was using a particular credit card that helped me build a lot of points very fast. So something that I actually recommend to a lot of fourth year medical students is before you become a fourth year medical student, um, opening up a particular credit card that will get you back a lot of either cash back or points back. There's a lot of expenses that you'll have as a fourth year medical student, namely board exams, interviews, all that travel expenses. If you're traveling for, in for rotations, you'll be spending a lot of money on travel, food, and there's a particular Chase credit card that um, I believe is a Chase preferred credit card. It was referred to me from one of my classmates and the first year's initiation fee was waived. It was basically a free credit card for the first year and I just racked up points on points on points. And when you use those points towards 
travel itself, you can actually get a lot more bang for your buck in a sense. So the number of points that you use uh, actually has more value when you use it on the actual website for certain activities or flights or uh, trains or whatever. So that's another tip that I have when you are traveling. Another really important point is where I stayed. So I stayed in hostels the whole entire time. Um, I'd never been to a hostel before. The only time that I heard about hostels was on TV shows or movies or something like that. I had no idea what to expect. But around this time, I also had a friend who really helped me kind of come up with my itinerary because I had no idea what anything was like in Europe, which I think is a big thing to look into and try to get some advice from somebody about because these are completely foreign countries if you've never been out of America. I also didn't really understand the landscape of where things were in relation to each other. So she was really helpful in coming up with that itinerary and then by extension, finding hostels in each city. She was also really helpful in, in teaching me about uh, that sort of accommodation. So the place that I actually found all of my hostels was hostelworld.com. No, I'm not sponsored. I'm not that cool yet, but what you can do on this app is actually filter out hostels and uh, find them based on location, cleanliness, their ratings. And the thing that I liked the most was how you can filter out whether it's a co-ed room or um, single gender room. And just personally, I was more comfortable in either a private room or a room that was shared by all females with a bathroom in that room if preferred, or at least that the bathroom was not shared and co-ed. So I was actually pretty successful in finding that everywhere. There was one moment where I checked into my room and I opened the door and there's a guy in the room. Um, but turns out he had also just checked in and he was in the wrong room. Um, so that can happen. But overall, it's kind of like, imagine being a college freshman, if you ever had the opportunity to experience this and you walk into your dorm room and you have one of those suites where there's like four or five people in the room and you kind of, there are bunk beds and things like that. Um, and you guys all share a bathroom. So it was kind of like that. And it was really weird because you're only there for a few nights, depending on your travel plans. So you either like don't even talk to anybody or you're all best friends, or at least you become friends with one or two people. And it's, pretty cool, interesting um, atmosphere. One of the tips that a friend of mine gave me was to always make sure that the places that you're staying obviously have really good reviews, but are also very close to city center. So I didn't really understand what city center meant either because I'm from the suburbs, but city center is basically like the center of the main city and finding hostels that are as close to the main city as possible makes it better because you won't need as much public transportation. You could probably walk around to most places. You won't have to spend time traveling and also money on metros or Ubers or anything like that. By the way, there's also Uber and I think Lyft in um, Europe as well, which is pretty cool. Um, there was one or two times I really needed it, but otherwise I tried to stick to buses, which is also <laughs> very interesting, and uh, metro system. Now, my experience with staying in hostels, I cannot recommend it enough. I think that it really transformed my whole experience on this trip. I got to meet a lot of people that I otherwise never would have met before. I met people that were older than me, that were younger than me, people just like me. They were people who whose jobs were to uh, be au pairs. I didn't even know what an au pair was until I met people who were au pairs. Uh, sometimes you get lucky and you end up being able to experience different parts of the city with these friends that you make. Um, and there were certain times where I would walk into a room and somebody else had also just checked in and you're like, hey, did you eat? No, I didn't. And you guys get to go out and eat together. And it's really cool because you're both there for the same exact reason. For the most part, everybody that I met that was staying in the same room as me was there to experience the city. And so if you're both there for the same reason, then it, it kind of makes it a cool experience to just kind of experience the same thing with someone else, um, but also not feel the pressure to spend three weeks with them at the same time. And sometimes you'll meet people who um, will show you certain parts of the city that they experienced the day before because they've been there a day or two longer than you and you get to learn the same things that they learned and experience the same things that they experienced, which is actually a really beautiful thing. 
I also love that I got to learn a lot from the people that I stayed with and built connections with. There are still people that I'm still Instagram friends with and we'll still be in touch every once in a while and keep up with what they're doing. One person's a nurse in the Bay Area, one person is a musician in Australia. Um, I got to see her wedding photos. I met two other girls from Australia that were the sweetest, funniest girls ever. Um, so there are just so many people that you can meet. I also met a lawyer from the Philippines and she was just my spirit animal there in Paris to go to Le Champs Elysees and go shopping, except I couldn't compete because I didn't have the same income and I'm on a resident salary. But um, it was really cool to meet all these people. And I really recommend staying in hostel if you have that opportunity and if it's something that works for you and your personality or if it's something you just wanna push yourself out of your comfort zone. My general reflections on the trip was, I am so happy I got to experience this. I feel so blessed that I had the ability to pay for it, the time to go, the family that was supporting me and friends that supported me. I cannot express that enough. I won't lie and say that it was amazing every single minute. There were definitely times where I felt homesick, I felt lonely. There were certain cities where I went and like people in the hostels or in the city or town were not very open or I couldn't make as many friends as I did in the other cities. Um, and part of it's not even just about making friends, it's just about like in this one particular city, I like went into the hostel and like nobody talked to me, nobody talked to each other in the room. Um, everybody was kind of just doing their own thing and just very like um, laser focused. Uh, and I would walk around the city and nobody was really interacting with anybody else. So that was kind of lonely in that regard. I'm happy I kept pushing through. I think it was really inspirational to myself to get to the point where I was comfortable being by myself. I refrain from using the word alone because if you become so close with yourself that you are your own best friend, you're never really alone. So I now refrain from if it's ever a sentence, you know, like, hey, are you there alone? Like, I try not to say that. I try to say, hey, are you there by yourself? Um, because that, to me, just doesn't necessarily give off that indication that you are alone. Because being by yourself doesn't necessarily mean that you're alone. And to me, success from that trip was getting comfortable with being by myself and you have all the time in the world, so you get to know yourself really well, and you don't really have anybody else but your thoughts. And if there are things that you're working out in your mind, it's a really great time to reflect. Hi, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If I look at you're older now, it's because I am. Uh, I recorded all of that actually almost a year ago, and I finally got around to uh, having someone really great edit it for me because I just kept pushing it off. So I hope you enjoyed it and I do have part two available for all the different items that I actually took with me. So uh, feel free to look out for that if you're interested. Bye.